Hello, Classic Rock fans. I am reporting about a week after seeing John Mellencamp in concert at the Riverside Theater in Milwaukee. Why am I doing this a week after the show? Well, uh, this concert happened to occur uh, right in the middle of Milwaukee's Summerfest, uh, which I have been at multiple times and seeing a bunch of shows there. I'm trying to get all this stuff straight. Uh, this is the most... Uh, concert heavy part of the year for me so it's kind of a good problem to have unfortunately I'm behind in some of my reviews here this concert was originally supposed to be played at the Riverside I believe back in April but for whatever reason I think John fell ill they had to reschedule um, for this past week the end of June I say show, I actually mean two concerts. He was originally booked for a two-night stand uh, back in April or whatever it was. Uh, so he had to reschedule both Milwaukee shows here to the end of June. I went to the second night, and that ended up being the final show of his whole tour. Now, he said he's probably going to announce some more dates soon. Um, but for this leg of the tour he's on now... This show was the closer, so I am going to talk about um, how that went. This was the first time I've ever seen Mellencamp in concert, to my regret, because he put on a great show tonight. I think he is someone who is reliable for good live performances, and as I'll go through in this video, the show I saw was awesome. There was only one problem, and it had nothing to do uh, with John's performance. Unfortunately, I kind of have to start with the problem because it was more or less the opening act. So this situation is a little odd. I've never seen this as part of a concert before. But for some reason, the tour sponsor for Mellencamp this year was Turner Classic Movies. And we all found this out because as everyone took their seats, we saw that there was a large screen hanging down over the stage. And at 8 o'clock sharp, a video started playing on the screen. And it was an interview with John and someone from Turner Classic Movies. In the video, John talked about how much he loved these old classic black and white films so and how uh, Turner Classic Movies wasn't past, like a typical tour sponsor, uh, whatever that means. And from that interview, it segued into a series of extended clips from multiple films, including Fugitive Kind, The Misfits, Giant, Paper Moon, Grapes of Wrath, Hud, On the Waterfront, and A Streetcar Named Desire. Now, I know what you're thinking. It must have been some 30-second clip of each one, right? Well, you would be wrong. These were like four to five minute clips each Meaning, this intro montage of classic movie clips ran for 30 minutes before John came on stage. This was a huge surprise to everyone in the audience, and not a particularly good one. The first clip from Fugitive Kind, people seemed to be okay with, even though it seemed to run very long. But when the clip from the second movie started playing, I could already hear people around me asking each other, what is going on? What's the deal with this? By the third movie clip, people were getting up and going back to concessions. And I want to say by the fourth or fifth movie clip, we started to hear boos. This video package was simply not received well by the crowd. For starters, the audio was not very good. Maybe it was the structure of the building, maybe it was the audio setup, I don't know. But it was just pretty hard to hear a lot of the dialogue in these clips, even if you were paying attention, which I was for at least a little while. But I can guarantee you 90% of the people in the theater were not. And then it became even harder to hear because people just started talking amongst themselves. Nobody wanted to watch these clips. One woman I was sitting near said to the person she was with, I'm surprised people aren't walking out. Well, that might be a little extreme, but I can appreciate the sentiment. I can appreciate that nobody came to the theater to see this, and I kind of feel bad criticizing 
the show for for this aspect of it because I actually think Turner Classic Movies could make a good tour sponsor for John Mellencamp because I think at least some of the people in the audience would be very receptive to the idea of <laughs> watching old movies. This was an older crowd. Mellencamp's career goes back a long way. He was very inspired by those movies, so the people who've been you know, a fan of him all these years, I'm sure many of them uh, like those old classic movies as well, or perhaps want to revisit some of that stuff all these years later. The problem was with how they decided to advertise it. A 30-minute run of classic movie clips did not work. I think you could have done it in like 10 minutes if they were short 30-second clips intercut with a longer interview that perhaps John did with someone from Turner Classic Movies. Have John narrate why he likes some of these movies. Engage a little bit. Don't just throw these clips at the audience who aren't here to see that. A video with some sort of conversation and the clips woven in a little more succinctly, I think would have played a lot better. But unfortunately, with how it played out, this extended half hour advertisement for TCM is always gonna stick out to me as one of the worst opening acts I've ever seen at a concert. And I think anyone who sees this tour will probably remember it in the same way, if they remember it at all. And I say that because as soon as the clips ended, people started applauding in relief, not in appreciation, and Mellencamp came on stage shortly after, and as soon as he started playing that first song, I think the collective memory of all of those old movie clips left the building entirely. And that's a compliment to Mellencamp, that he can just kind of wipe away that collective memory with about 30 seconds of any song from his catalog. So the show opened with a really good mix of radio staples and fan favorites. He started with John Cocker's Paper and Fire, Minutes to Memories, Small Town, Human Wheels, Jackie Brown, and Check It Out. That is an excellent mix of classic radio hits that everybody knows, along with some fan favorites. So the show started very strongly and the crowd was really into it. Now, at the midpoint of the show, he slowed it down for an acoustic set, which included three songs. Now, before the start of the first song, The Eyes of Portland, he told the story behind the lyrics of the song, which is this heartbreaking real-life experience he had when he encountered uh, a homeless woman who needed some help, and he was basically able to give her some money, but not do very much else for her, and... He felt a pretty intense frustration that he might have made that day for her just a little easier, but it didn't do anything for her long term. And that's kind of a shared experience that a lot of people have when they encounter someone who is homeless. And the lyrics of the song express the frustration, express the frustration that there's not more done on a social level to help people in need. The next acoustic song was Longest Days, and then he concluded his acoustic set with Jack and Diane, which became a big crowd sing-along actually too soon. <laughs> so what happened was is he started playing a very slow version of Jack and Diane, and the crowd was singing along. And when he got to the end of the first verse, the crowd mistakenly went to the chorus. Everyone's going, oh yeah, life goes on. And as that's happening, John stands up and starts shouting, no, no, stop, stop, what are you doing? And gives a very tongue-in-cheek lecture about song structure, saying that for this track, it goes first verse, second verse, and then chorus. And that went over really well. The crowd got a big laugh out of that. So he resumed the song, sang the second verse, and then the crowd very enthusiastically started singing the chorus of the song and stayed with him for the rest of the song. I think Jack and Diane is going to be the biggest sing-along, crowd-pleasing moment of the whole show, no matter how you play it. So the fact that he chose to do it acoustically 
I think is interesting, but I also think it worked really well. I don't think he would have gotten this big of a crowd reaction if he had played uh, a different one of his radio staples that way. I think Jack and Diane was the right one to do if he wanted to have a sing-along with an acoustic number. After that was, I would say, the most unique part of the show. Not necessarily a positive element to the show, but certainly not necessarily a negative element either. So first, he told us a story about how he was friends with actor Paul Newman and Paul's wife, Joanne Woodward, who was also an accomplished actress in her own right. And Mellencamp said he stayed friends with Joanne for years after Paul Newman had passed away. And sometime in those years, Joanne recorded a poem or a set of song lyrics that John had wrote called The Real Life. So he had this audio recording of her simply reading these lyrics. So what he did at our show was he played that recording over the PA and had two people from his band play their instruments to accompany it. It didn't take very long, maybe three or four minutes, and it was definitely unique. It was not something I've ever seen in a concert before, but it definitely was the moment that a lot of people chose to take their bathroom break or went to grab another beer. There was a lot of movement from the aisles when this was going on, and I think that was simply due to the fact that John was straight up off stage when this uh, recording was playing. So after that, he came out and he went back into rock star mode and he closed the show out with a series of big hits. Rain on the Scarecrow, Lonely Old Night, What If I Came Knocking, an extended version of Crumbling Down, which featured a snippet of the old them song, Gloria. That was a lot of fun. And he concluded with Pink Houses to a big reaction. The crowd was totally with him. Might have wavered a little bit with that recording, but everyone was right back with him for the final chunk of the show, which was all crowd pleasers. Somewhere near the end, he introduced the band, and I guess it was his violinist's birthday that day, so he had the band sing happy birthday to her. That was kind of sweet. And then after the encore break, he came out and played Cherry Bomb and Hurt So Good, two more big crowd pleasers, so he sent everyone home happy. In short, this was a fantastic concert that hit all kinds of high marks. He started off very strong. He slowed down in the middle of the show, but all of that stuff stayed very interesting and engaging. And then the final third of the show was just sing-along anthems that the crowd was all totally into. Basically, John's been doing this for a very long time. He knows how to play a show. He knows how to please a crowd. And I really enjoyed it, and I think anybody who goes out to see him will really enjoy it, too. I'm happy to say that, despite being this deep into his career, his voice hasn't seemed to suffer at all. He sounded great on all of these songs, in particular the acoustic numbers. Awesome show. Glad I got a chance to see him. I regret that it has taken me this long to see Mellencamp in concert, but hey, what can you do? Better late than never. All right, so with that... Once Mellencamp gets the next leg of his tour going, if he comes to your town, I would highly recommend going to the show. Otherwise, if you're a fan of classic rock, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of the other concert reviews I've done on the channel. I guarantee I've talked about a different artist you're a fan of. And if you are a fan of classic rock, I don't know if you know this, but I do a podcast about classic rock, and I would really encourage you to check that out as well. Links to the podcast, as well as our social media, is in the description below. Please check all of that. And again, give us a subscription, because that stuff really helps. Okay, with that, thank you so much for watching, and keep rocking.